Grange over Sands is everything a seaside town should be. With its beautiful buildings and amazing views, it's one of those small places which feels like it has lots of history and stories just tucked away. On the edge of the promenade stands a strange building jutting out into the salt marsh. The large ring of a buttressed concrete sea defence wall topped with a smaller brick wall and with a concrete diving platform peeking over the top. This is Grange Lido, a 20th century open air swimming pool. You don't see one of those every day and it's the only one left in the northwest. But the poor old thing is shut and boarded up. But between 1932 and 1993, families from all over the country swam here. Apparently, Patrick Troughton, who was the second Doctor Who, used to bring his children. What wouldn't we give for a TARDIS to go back and see it in its heyday? And there are also many other people who still hold treasured recollections of the Lido as Grange Baths. I was in Grange Swimming Club. We used to meet in the summer there a couple of times a week uh, and we'd have our galas there. And of yeah. course I've been swimming there and learnt to swim there since I was three. Right. And uh, yeah, with and my brothers and all the family and everybody, all the kids in Grange, that's what we did. We lived down there. We couldn't wait to finish from school, raced yeah. down to the pool and dive in. Easily right. spend the day here, bring a picnic, listen out for the siren when the tide was coming in. Why, was that a big event? Yeah, big event. Well, so tide, you get the big siren and, um, <laughs> and then you'd all, you'd all climb up, clamber up the side of the wall yeah. onto the um, seating bits and peer over. I remember the cafe up on the top, sort of if, I suppose if you stood looking out to the bay there was a cafe on the right hand side. Mm. There's a platform up there for some bay then. Yeah, 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 and I can remember it was always on good days, it was sort of a, a black a black top and it was always too hot to walk across. I can never remember the name of the lady who ran the cafe but I still I still see her from time to time uh, in Grange. And even when it was pouring down, we were down there, yeah. standing in the rain first before he dived in the water. Well, it didn't matter, did it? Cause, well, he, he got the, if he stood in the rain, when he dived in the water, it felt warmer. All my survival badges, so your, your bronze medallion right the way through, and it was so cold that we actually had to crack the ice a couple of times. Um, but that's proper survival, isn't it? In its mission to reopen the Lido so that new memories can be created, the Save Grange Lido organisation has been digging into its past. The Lido is an important piece of a very big puzzle. The history of holiday making and Britain's changing social climate through the 19th and 20th centuries come together in this Lido. In this film, we will tell you how. The story of the Grange we know today begins in 1857 when the last stretch of the Ulverston and Lancaster Railway was built, the same line that passes through the town today. But before that, Grange was hard to access. Large groups could only come on cross-bay steamers or take the treacherous routes across the sands. Thanks to the trains, more people could visit from further afield. Five years later, in 1862, the line was taken over by the Furness Railway Company. At that time, Britain's railway companies were revamping themselves to focus more on carrying passengers than freight. That meant big business, so the Furness Railway Company started investing in Grange. For instance, they built the Promenade, providing a place for the town's increasing number of visitors to take their ease. Looking at the beauty of this place today, it's obvious why visitors have loved coming to Grange over the years. But where did the original appeal of visiting the seaside come from? For hundreds of years, it was believed that being by the sea cured all sorts of ailments. 
Dr. Richard Russell pioneered this idea in the 18th century. But please note, Russell also believed drinking seawater was good for you, so take him, ironically, with a pinch of salt. Despite the flimsy science, his ideas caught on. Grange's coastal location made it perfect for sick people to come and recuperate. The town thrived by accommodating them. The Grand Hotel, built in 1880 by the Furness Railway Company, was originally called the Hazelwood Hydropathic Establishment, a place for people to receive all kinds of miracle maritime medicines. The patients flocking to Grange had to be entertained, so throughout the rest of the 1800s public attractions were created. There was the bandstand, which was moved from the promenade to Park Road Gardens after people wearing their finery on the prom complained about getting covered in soot from passing steam trains. The golf course and the ornamental gardens allowed those who lived in cramped industrial cities to take in the fresh air. These ways of entertaining the unwell visitors had an unintended side effect. They made Grange equally irresistible for healthy tourists who began to outnumber people looking to cure their illnesses. This happened in towns all around the British coast and gradually they turned into seaside resorts. In Grange, many of those early beachgoers would have been enjoying their wakes weeks, a holiday which working people in Lancashire have observed since the Middle Ages. Whole towns would empty and the mills would fall silent as the workforce left to take in the delights of Blackpool, Morecambe and Grange. It's an incredible part of Lancashire's history because ordinary people were, for the first time, travelling for pleasure. In other parts of the country, people from working class backgrounds did not have that kind of freedom. For centuries, only the aristocracy travelled for pleasure. The coast was amongst their favourite getaways. Then, during the Industrial Revolution, business owners started generating their own wealth. They wanted to emulate the landed gentry, and this included holidaying at the seaside and when eventually the working class had the resources and the rights to take holidays, they too found the beach a desirable location. This was a very slow process, but by the early to mid 20th century almost everybody, rich or poor, Lancastrian or otherwise, liked to be beside the seaside. Grange, and towns like it, became tourist hotspots. In 1932, Grange opened the ultimate seaside attraction. People of all backgrounds, both poorly patients and excited vacationers, could enjoy it. It was Grange Open Air Swimming Baths, better known today as Grange Lido. Grange Open Air Swimming Baths opened with a huge gala on the 18th of August 1932. It featured swimming races, fashion shows, and even something called a motionless floating display, a predecessor of synchronised swimming. The event was attended by the 14th Earl of Derby, the Cotton Queen of 1932, Marjorie Knowles, Alice Milner, Beauty Queen of the North, and even some Olympic champions, to name just a few. It was a glamorous occasion that marked the Lido as a jewel in Grange's crown. In 1936, while opening Morecambe's Lido, the Governor of the Bank of England said, Bathing reduces rich and poor, high and low, to a common standard of enjoyment and health. When we get down to swimming, we get down to democracy. He was right. In a swimming pool, with no posh clothes, with men, women and children taking part together, social hierarchy doesn't exist. Lido's like Granges symbolise that great effect that swimming can have. Anyone can do it, whoever they are. Some time after the pool opened, this pamphlet was published. Written by a frequent visitor to Grange, it gives a glowing account of the town and the Lido's place in it. As Sidney Walton says, 
There are many splendid and joyous resorts in Britain, each perhaps with some particular attraction, but none like Grange over Sands. Grange, lovely Grange, contains and combines all the charms and comforts that make a holiday unique, the little town nestling at the foot of the mountains. He quotes Thomas Johnson, an earlier guidebook writer, who said that Grange possesses in combination essentials rarely found in seaside resorts, at least in England, namely a genial climate, sheltered situation, an invigorating sea breeze, a dry soil and enchanting scenery. And after describing a tour around the sites of Grange, Mr Walton promises himself a day out at Grange Baths. We promise ourselves more to come with tests of that clean, gorgeous bathing pool set in its plantation of trees and warmth. To know Grange once is to love it always. By the 1930s, improvements in transportation, an explosion of public entertainment and the increasing social freedom in Britain had combined to make Grange one of the most popular holiday destinations, and the Lido was its greatest achievement. It's an integral part of what made Grange such a cherished place. If you walk along the promenade in Grange over Sands today and approach the derelict site of Grange Baths, you will see people gazing in through the viewing hole in the fence. What might they be thinking? If they're older, they may well have fond memories of childhood, of summer days, of family and friends, of a place where people could meet, be active and make good memories. If they're young, they might wish that such a place was still open. Many, though, may have no idea of the glorious history right in front of them. This is when we need Doctor Who's TARDIS to take us right back to when it was open. Imagine the sounds that would greet us as we drew near. Water splashing. Loud excited voices cheering and laughing. Children playing in the paddling pool. Delighted crowds sunbathing and chatting. Glimpses of daredevils climbing to the top of the diving platform and jumping off and being applauded by the onlookers. All that happiness, just waiting for you to pass through the doors and join in. Once upon a time, that was an everyday experience for both visitors to and residents of Grange. Hopefully, thanks to Save Grange Lido, it can be so again, and the Lido can offer its amazing charms well into the 21st century. Sands has got a prom, prom, prom It's the perfect place a Lido should belong Soon we'll swim in a Lido by the seaside There is no finer place to be Through the water you will glide When you dive in from the side Inside a Lido beside the sea 